Morthogenesis is the process by which the many individual cells within that developing embryo move around and organize themselves to eventually form the specialized and complex structures, organs, and systems that make up that adult individual, that adult organism. Now, morthogenesis is stimulated by two different types of factors, by chemical factors and mechanical factors. Now, a chemical factor is simply a special type of chemical, while a mechanical factor is simply a physical force that exists between our cells. And these two factors basically play together. There is an interplay between these two factors that stimulates the process of morthogenesis. And as we'll see in just a moment, these two different types of factors can basically influence the different types of processes that takes place within the cell and they can also influence the behavior of that cell. So a group of molecules that play a particularly important role in the process of morthogenesis are known as morthogens. So morthogens are these chemicals, are these molecules that act as signal molecules and that can actually affect the behavior of the cell. For example, they can change the different types of processes that take place within the cell and they can actually cause that cell to migrate, to move from one location to another location within that nearby developing tissue. Now, cells generally respond to morthogens based on the level or the concentration of that morthogen found in that local environment. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So, we have cell number one and cell number two. Notice these cells on their membranes contain these special protein receptors that can actually bind these morthogens, these special signal molecules. Notice on the left side, we have a much higher concentration of these morthogens than on the right side. And because we have many more of these morthogen molecules around this cell, these signal molecules will be much more likely to actually bind onto the receptor protein than on this cell. And so the different types of processes that takes place inside this cell will be different than inside this cell as a result of the binding of that morthogen onto the protein cell receptor on that membrane. Now the question is, what usually happens when the morthogen actually binds onto that protein receptor? So when the binding takes place, usually a type of molecule known as a transcription factor is activated inside that cell. And that transcription factor, which is usually a protein itself, basically goes into the nucleus of that cell and it binds onto a special region on the DNA. And by binding onto the DNA, it can either activate, it can either turn on or turn off the expression of some particular type of gene. So, for example, let's suppose this morthogen binds onto this protein membrane that activates some type of transcription factor and then that transcription factor moves into the nucleus, it binds onto the DNA and it activates some sort of gene. And by activating that gene, it creates some sort of specific protein. Now, the subsequent protein that is created can either do one of three different things. It can actually change the composition of different types of proteins found on the cell membrane of that cell. And that can essentially affect the process of cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. And cell-to-cell -cell adhesion is the process by which cells bind and attach to other cells. So, let's focus for now on cell adhesion. So, cells can bind to one another by using a special type of molecule found on the membrane known as the cell adhesion molecule or CAM. Now, it turns out that morthogens can influence the way that cells attach to other cells by expressing different types of CAM molecules on the membrane of those cells. In fact, it turns out that the reason one 
one cell binds to another cell is because they have the same type of CAM molecule. So cells tend to aggregate and form groups because they contain the same exact cell adhesion molecule on the membrane. So we see that cells tend to bind only to those cells that have the same type of cell adhesion molecule and this means that the CAM molecule can actually influence the formation of different types of groups of cells and that can lead to the formation of different types of tissues. For example, we have these blue cells and we have these purple cells. These purple cells form a group of their own because they have one type of cell adhesion molecule while the blue cells form a group of their own and bind together because they have a completely different type of cell adhesion molecule. Now this process for example plays an important role in the formation of the gastrula stage. So during gastrulation our morthogens influence the type of cell to cell adhesion molecules that are found within our cells. And to see what we mean let's take a look at the following diagram. So this is basically our blastula stage. So we have the trophoblast cells and we have these inner cell mass that are shown in blue. Now when we go from our blastula to our gastrula, what begins to happen is these blue cells that are part of the inner cell mass not only undergo cell differentiation, they don't only form two different types of cells, but they also begin to move away from one another and to move away from from one another, they have to detach from one another. And to detach from one another, what must happen is these morthogens must bind onto the cell membrane, causing the breakdown of these special types of cell membrane molecules known as cell adhesion molecules. And by decreasing the amount of cell adhesion molecules between these cells, these cells are able to actually detach from one another and they can move away from one another once they actually detach. And so by decreasing the amount of cell adhesion molecules, we can eventually form these two structures. So remember, this eventually forms the umbilical vesicle, also known as our yolk sac, and this eventually forms the blue cells eventually form our amnion in which we have the actual embryo, that developing embryo. So cell adhesion is a very important process that takes place within morthogenesis. And cell to cell adhesion is affected by these morthogens. Now what about the other thing that these proteins can actually do? So aside from affecting the way that cells actually adhere to one another, these proteins can also, can also change the composition of the extracellular matrix that is found around the cell. Now, what has the extracellular matrix has to have to do with the process of morthogenesis? Well, basically, the, the, the entire purpose and function of the extracellular matrix is basically one of two things. What it does is it separates the different types of cells. So by producing this extracellular matrix, which consists of different types of protein, proteins, such as, for example, collagen, this cell is separated from this cell. Now the other purpose of the matrix is to basically create a system of roads that ultimately allows a cell to move or migrate from one location to a different location. So by creating a different types or by changing the composition of the matrix that ultimately allows the formation of some type of roadway system that allows a cell to move from one location to a different location. So when the morthogen binds onto the protein protein receptor, it can stimulate that cell to produce a special type of protein that is found inside the extracellular matrix that can ultimately influence the movement of that cell. Now the last important part is the fact that these proteins produced as a result of the binding of the morthogen can also influence the way that the cell actually contracts. It can influence the shape and the size of that cell. 
For example, special types of cells can produce uh, special types of proteins known as myosin and actin. And when myosin and actin, which are found in muscle cells, contract, they cause those cells to actually contract. And by contracting, what those cells do is they create mechanical forces, these physical forces that can act on nearby cells. And by exerting some type of mechanical force on a nearby cell, what that can do is it can basically stimulate the process process of not only morphogenesis but also cell determination, cell differentiation as well as cell growth and cell proliferation. So we see that morphogens can also stimulate the expression of contractile proteins such as actin and myosin. Now the contraction of these proteins can change the shape and size of the cell and this can exert a force on nearby cells and that can ultimately influence things like gene expression, cell determination, cell differentiation and morphogenesis. So we see that morphogenesis is stimulated by not only these chemical factors, but also these mechanical factors. And more specifically, when these morphogens influence the processes inside the cell, normally the process that is stimulated is gene expression. And by producing these proteins inside the cell, these proteins can either change the cell-to-cell -cell adhesion properties, the composition of that matrix, or the ability of that cell to contract and as a result to form those mechanical forces to exert those mechanical forces that also influence the process of morphogenesis.